Hey, welcome to the greenhouse. I'm Alex. Actually, welcome to the greenhouse kitchen. This is a how-to video where we're going to make a homemade spectrometer. A spectrometer is any instrument used to view and analyze a range or spectrum of a given characteristic of a material. That characteristic might be sound. Or it might be the composition of really distant objects. We're going to look at the way that light interacts with the sample. So the type of spectrometer we want is a spectrophotometer. And we're going to rummage through the closet and the recycling bin for the components we need to build a simple infrared spectrophotometer. Simple because it won't have the ability to analyze different portions of the spectrum. We'll just look at the whole thing. But that can still be really useful. A spectrophotometer has three parts, an energy source, a sample chamber, and an energy detector. Here are the three components, our source, our sample chamber, and our detector. Our infrared source is gonna be a mug warmer. Most of these heat to about 150 Fahrenheit, 65 C, and that's gonna generate plenty of infrared for this experiment. Um, you can see that I can handle it, and it's warm, but not too hot. And you wanna plug this in first because the mug warmer needs to warm up and have a stable temperature when we run the experiment. Infrared energy has a wavelength longer than visible light and a common tool for viewing the world in infrared is an infrared thermometer. We're gonna use an infrared thermometer that I bought at a hardware store and it has a wavelength detection range between nine and 14 micrometers. For the sample chamber, we'll use a juice bottle that has smooth parallel walls and in this experiment, we're looking for changes in the amount of infrared that passes through the sample. So we wanna make the sample chamber as transparent as possible to infrared. These plastic walls are pretty thick and sturdy. I'm gonna cut little windows in the bottle that I'll cover with food wrap, making it much more transparent to infrared. Now we line up the components of the spectrometer and we'll use whatever we've got around to adjust the heights so they're all in line. I'm going to use tape to keep the infrared thermometer in place and I'm going to use a small carpenter's clamp to hold down the trigger because we're measuring a change in conditions before and after we add carbon dioxide to our chamber. We don't want anything to move so taping is a really good idea. Next, we need a way to introduce carbon dioxide into the sample chamber. We're gonna use sodium bicarbonate tablets that produce carbon dioxide when they react with water. Now, if you were in chem class, you'd do this with an Erlenmeyer flask, but you can also use a water bottle and make a hole in the cap that'll fit a piece of aquarium tubing. Last thing, I'm gonna use the camera on my phone to film the display of the infrared thermometer so that I've got a digital timestamp record of what happened. Note that the carpenter's clamps are a great substitute if you don't have a tripod or a camera mount. Now, optional, we could put a carbon dioxide monitor into or on top of the bottle if we've got one. And you'll see in the video where I run this experiment that I've included a CO2 meter. But you don't need to do this. We can be pretty sure that there's carbon dioxide entering the sample bottle. And since CO2 is more dense than air, it's gonna stay there long enough for us to run the experiment, even with the cap off the sample bottle. All right, now when you run the experiment, always take a baseline measurement first before anything happens. One minute is good in this case. After one minute, we're gonna add two sodium bicarbonate tablets to the bottle, cap it quickly, make sure we don't bump anything, and then we're gonna run the experiment for four more minutes for a total experimental runtime of five minutes. 
And now you're ready to explore how infrared energy interacts with carbon dioxide gas in the atmosphere. So a very similar experiment could be done with visible light and with water samples in order to explore the impact of trace quantities of impurities in the water. You'll set up the spectrometer in a very similar way, but just swap out the three components. We'll use a desk lamp as the source instead of the mug warmer. We'll just use a regular old juice bottle. And then any kind of light meter, an inexpensive one from a garden center, or there's free apps on your phone that you could use. And then we'll run the experiment in the same way. The spectrometer that we've built is as basic as it gets, but it actually allows us to explore some really interesting processes in the environment around us.